Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if all is right with the world, Blender 4.1 should be released today. Or if it's already out right now, go ahead and download it. What we're going to do in this video is look at five of the coolest new features in Blender 4.1, and sadly look at one feature that is not. And that is Blender EV Next, which sadly is probably the feature I was looking forward to the most. It's the next generation of the EV real-time renderer. Sadly, it got bumped back to Blender 4.2. So if you're waiting for EV Next, you're not going to get it in this release. Hopefully in the next release though, but now let's look at things that we actually did get. So here we are in Blender 4.1, technically the release candidate. I'm recording this before the release goes live. And what we're going to do is sacrifice a default cube because of course we're going to. All right, with the sacrifices out of the way, I'm gonna show you something that I have wanted in Blender since the very first time I used Blender. And I am absolutely delighted that it is here now. So I'm gonna go ahead into my downloads folder and I'm going to go and find a rubber duck. This rubber duck is from Sketchfab. You're going to notice here that I have two models. The first one here is an OBJ file, and I'm just going to drop this into the scene, and what you're going to notice is the OBJ importer pops up immediately. This is something that should have been there all along. It is finally there now. It is also smart enough to pull in the material file and automatically apply the texture. This is wonderful. So you're able to drag and drop in 3D file formats into Blender, and it will automatically invoke the right importer and make things work. However, this isn't a shining great example quite yet. There are some downsides here. Specifically, this does not work with Python-based importers yet. This is something that's still working on. So for example, if I grab this GLB file, uh, it does nothing. So in theory, GLB, FBX, other file formats are coming in the future right now. It is the C++ based ones that work. But for example, OBJ files, you can literally drag and drop them in and they will import exactly like you would expect it to. And hopefully those other formats come on soon. This is a big deal for me. It's something that you just, it's the way I expect the software to behave. So it's nice that it is finally working that way. Now we're moving on to cool feature number two. We're going to sacrifice yet another default cube. So goodbye cube. All right, so now what we're gonna do is replace it with a Susan. Here's the monkey. All right, so there we go. Uh, so we've got a monkey in the world. And to really illustrate what this one's all about, I need to go back in time to Blender 4.0. So here we are in Blender 4.0. Let's start a new project up here. We'll sacrifice a 4.0 cube as well and create a monkey here as well. So one of the things that has changed here in object mode here for this guy, if I right click, we have shade smooth and shade smooth auto. These have actually been replaced. So when you're shading something, something you do all the time with mesh modeling, well, it has changed in functionality in Blender 4.1. So here we are in Blender 4.1 in object mode, and you'll notice it is still there, but we also have shade smooth by angle. And what will this will do? You'll see the invocation down here. You can pick the angle and to keep sharp edges. So if I switch over to edge mode, you will see the edges that it has provided there. So it is basically the same functionality, but where this really changes, let's go ahead and create, so back to object mode, we will add another monkey in place. So they basically changed the way that um, the shade smooth has worked. And that has had a couple of ramifications. Back here, if you wanted to change the edge amount, that was actually done down here under normals. So now that's been incorporated directly into the shade smooth by edge, but that's not the only change we've got with the way the shade smooth will operate. So now you've got it available as a modifier. So this is gonna change the way you work with it. So you come down here to normals and you're gonna find shade smooth by angle. So you can implement it that way. You can have it ignore sharpness or not. Uh, and then you have another option here for shading smooth. And this is going along with the typical way of doing things in Blender these days. So let's create one more monkey here and grab it and move it over this way. And of course it is geometry nodes. So come down here and we'll bring up our geometry node editor like so. And we can apply a geometry node to this guy right here like so. And what we can do is add a new unit and it is a shade smooth like so. Drop it in and boom. And then you got control over uh, how it was implemented and so on. So Shade Smooth was completely rewritten. There is the new Shade Smooth by angle option by right clicking in the object. There is also the modifier stack version of it, as you can see right here. And then of course there is the geometry notes version of it as well. So completely new approach to Shading Smooth, uh, but I think this is much more uh, flexible. It will fit into more pipelines and just basically work better all around. Next up, we have a powerful new feature on the geometry node side of things, and that is baking. So what we got here, this is geometry nodes demo from the uh, Godot site. Let's open this up here, switch over to our geometry nodes editor, and I will show you what this is all about. So what we want to do is grab the one that's generating the leaves on this tree. So here is the node network that is generating these leaves. 
Let's scroll that up and into view. So you got this thing, it calculates, it does a bunch of things over and over again. But what you might find is that you just don't want this network to run again and again and again and again. There's a huge performance ramification. Let's say you have hundreds of trees in your scene. That is not ideal because basically it is looping through this entire process to create the leaves on this tree. So what you could do now, and this is really cool, is I can come in here and I can add a new node of type of bake. I'll just drop that in between there and there. And now this can be baked. Boom, like so. And then now it's not running through the entire node network anymore. It's basically just running from here to here. So it's gonna make it super, super, super fast. Now let's say you wanna actually go ahead and change something on this tree. What do I do? Let's come back here somewhere in the network and we'll just change this seed. So you notice I'm changing it and literally nothing is happening. So as I change the seed, nothing is happening on our model. Well, what you do is you head on back over here to your bake node, like so, and you just bake again and then it updates it. So if you change a setting in your network, you basically, what you're doing is saying, okay, now update it. And then boom, it will recalculate the geometry node network. Basically it's making everything from the left side of this. So everything that connects into this pinpoint, it's already being cached. So you're getting the performance benefit of basically uh, an end result as opposed to an update. The downside is of course, if you make any changes to it, you're going to have to rebake it manually. But if you're dealing with something, again, like you've got a bunch of trees that you're literally instantiating into a forest, doing that with geometry nodes where it's calculating the entire node network every time, it's going to have huge performance costs. But putting this baking in there, and you saw how easy it was. I literally just dropped the baking node in and I was done. Really powerful new feature. Now this isn't the only change for geometry nodes in Blender 4.1. The other things are definitely smaller, but pretty cool. For one, the Musgrove texture uh, has been replaced with a noise texture. So now it's a property of the noise texture. On top of that, there's a switch menu, splits to instances and index switch nodes have all been added. Sort elements nodes allowed rendering of geometry elements based on a sort key and other additions there. So geometry nodes just keep getting better and better, which is quite nice. But again, it's the baking that I think is the big new deal here. Another cool feature is the new addition of GPU support for the denoiser. So if you're doing uh, cycles viewport rendering, you're gonna find this one is a lifesaver. So right now what you see, uh, this is the barbershop scene, but it's using optics as a denoiser. I'm gonna move around the scene a little bit and you're gonna see as it kicks in the process or the speed in which the denoising takes. So it's not bad at all. Now what I'm going to do is switch that one out to the open image denoise. And now we're gonna see, we can do fast or um, elbow only. So let's just move that around. And what you're gonna see is this is damn near real time. So you're getting a much better representation of what the denoising is going to look like. You have the option at any time to switch this back to CPU, but generally you're not going to wanna do this because you'll see the speed results right away on the denoising. It is not real time-esque like it is if you use the new GPU. But if you use GPU, you're gonna see once again, move things around and you can see how fast that denoiser is kicking in. So that one is really going to be a godsend for people working with a GPU and the cycles renderer, but there is a caveat. As of right now, it does not work on AMD GPUs. Uh, it's something that is definitely in the works. I think in 4.2, AMD support should be there as well. But if you're using an Intel Arc, an M1 or M series Mac or an Nvidia card, like what you're seeing in this demo, you now have GPU support for denoising in open image denoise, and it makes a huge difference. So our final cool new feature, this is a continuation of something that was added in Blender 4, and this is real-time viewport compositing. So you can take the normal compositing workflow like this. So let's go on down here to the compositor like so. I'm gonna say use nodes. We're gonna get this very simple uh, node network right here, just like working with geometry nodes or shader graph and so on. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say, okay, let's do compositor always. So this is going to render whatever we do here. So I'm going to do a really simple one. I'm going to come up here. We'll go into a hue, saturation, and value. Drop that node in there to connect the two. And now what you're going to see is in the viewport, you can actually work uh, real-time nodes and composite things and so on. So this was actually added in Blender 4.0. The big development actually is more of a maturity thing. So once again, here from the release notes, we see that they have added the nodes Vector Blur, Defocus, Crypto Mat, and Keying Screen. And the key thing here is this complete support for all nodes with the exception of passes in the render layers nodes, which only supports image, alpha, and depth passes. So basically this new compositor, the real-time compositor has parity with that one exception 
to the, the offline or standard rendered compositor. So uh, if you're doing real-time viewport compositing, it, it should now basically be the same as just compositing any other time. So those are the five coolest new features in my humble opinion, but there is a bunch more there. Once it has gone live, I will link the release notes down below if you want to go ahead and check out the full release. But Blender just keeps improving at a staggering rate. And tell me, what feature do you like best in 4.1? It's a shame that um, EV Next got pushed to 4.2, but hey, I'll have something to talk about in a couple of months then. So that's Blender 4.1. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.